بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا لا تقربوا الصلاه وانتم سكارى حتى تعلموا ما تقولون ولا جنبا الا عابري سبيل حتى تغتسلوا وان كنتم مرضى او على سفر او جاء احد منكم من الغائط أو جاء أحد منكم من الغائط أو لامستم النساء فلم تجدوا ماء فتيمموا فتيمموا صعيدا طيبا فامسحوا بوجوهكم وأيديكم إن الله كان عفوا غفورا صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين يا ايها الذين امنوا او بيبل هو هاف بيليفد لا تقربوا الصلاه دو نوت جو نير صلاه وانتم سكارى وين يو ار انتوكسيكيتد اندر انفلوينس So the background of this ayah is that this is from the time when before the hurmat of intoxication prohibition was commanded. So it is a wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those things that were very much part of the society of that time of the Arab people, the Sahaba as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to pull the sahaba away from those things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did it slowly and gradually in steps so alcohol drinking in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it has always remained a despised act a heinous act therefore the sulaha the people who were genuinely nice within themselves from the beginning they never went near it such as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but the general muslims they did not know about the prohibition because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not told them about that yet so they were very much habitual of drinking and the whole society was like that so one day sayyidina abdul rahman ibn auf radhiyallahu an it comes in books that he was a, he was somebody who was well off among the sahaba he he had a gathering at his house and this alcohol was also being served there and they became intoxicated and then the time came for maghrib so they stood in that state for maghrib and sayyidina ali radhiyallahu an was made the imam and as he was reciting qul ya ayyuhal kafirun he made some mistake so the command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came that at least in the time of salah do not drink at least in the time of salah do not this this is what, what it means some may Allah subhanahu wa protect us from going astray but some people these present day scholars who have no background in the in the culture of deen they read this ayah and said that when somebody is intoxicated salah is not a duty upon them salah is not farz upon them that is not the meaning of this ayah the yeah, meaning of this ayah is that when do not go near salah when you are intoxicated so it does not mean that the farz of salah has been taken away from you but the meaning is that at the time of salah when they, when they, when you know it's time for salah salah is 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 mandatory in its own time when you know that you are you have to pray do not drink do not go near it this is this this aya very beautifully put in the minds of the sahaba that this is something despised by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want to see it together with the beloved act of his which is salah so a lot of sahaba on listening to this aya gave up drinking altogether there was still others who took the command in this aya and stopped drinking at the time when of, of salah when the time of salah was approaching they would not drink at that time so anyway So this is the first command in this command in this ayah. Later on, I think in, in Surah Maida, it is expressly prohibited that salah, you know, it's not uh, drinking is not uh, permissible to Muslims. So la taqrabu salah wa antum shukara. Do not near go. Do not go near salah when you are intoxicated. Hatta taalamu ma taqulun until you recover from it. Basically, essentially you recover. Hatta taalamu ma taqulun. Then you until you come in a state where you at least know what you're saying. 
You know, you know what you're saying. So that is one state. Do not go near Salah in that. Wala junuban illa abiri sabilin hatta tagtasilu. And do not, there's another stage Allah SWT is mentioning that do not go to Salah in that state. Now this explains it again. That in a state of major impurity. What is major impurity? That impurity which necessitates ghusl, bath. So that is when somebody, when a man releases or after the special act. Except for when you are on your way. So the details of this hukum is coming ahead. So the other situation in which Allah SWT does not want people to go near Salah is that state of major impurity without hatta taqtasilu until you have taken a bath except for the one who is on his way, who is travelling. So the, the, the hakamat of traveller are going to come ahead and when they come we are going to discuss them. So from this is all, it is also understood that about alcohol it is the same thing. So nobody says that if you are in a state of major impurity Salah is relieved, the order of Salah is relieved from you, right? You are not released from Salah. Similarly, if you are intoxicated, Salah still remains first, but Allah SWT hates people who go there in a state of intoxication. So the meaning is, not that you don't, don't pray Salah, but stay away from drinking. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ مَرْضَىٰ أَوْ عَلَىٰ سَفَرٍ أَوْ جَاءَ أَحَدٌ مِّنْكُمْ مِنَ الْغَائِثِ أَوْ لَا مَسْتُمُ النِّسَاءِ فَلَمْ تَجِدُوا مَاءً فَتَيَمَّمُوا If you are sick or in travel, or if one of you has come after relieving himself, or you have had contact with women and you find no water, فَتَيَمَّمُوا Go for some clean dust, فَتَيَمَّمُوا صَعِيدًا طَيِّبًا Go for some clean dust. فَمْسَحُوا بِوُجُوهِكُمْ وَأَيْدِيكُمْ Wipe your faces and hands with it. إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَفُوًا غَفُورًا Definitely Allah is the most pardoning and the most forgiving. So these people, if you, if you land in a situation where you have got some impurity which necessitates to make wuzu or ghusl, <coughs> these situations have been mentioned that you've had contact with women or minor impurity which is you, you know, in common terms you've relieved yourself or gone to the bathroom or you are sick that kind of sick who will be hurt with water, water is damaging to them. Or if you are traveling and you do not find any, achha, so these are kinds of thing, th things have happened and you are sick, so you cannot use water or you are in a place where you find no water. Then do tayammum with clean dust and put it on your faces and your hands. Inna Allah kana afuban ghafura. So this will suffice for your purity. Now some basic rulings. Of course, it is rare in this world that we run into that situation. But back home sometimes it happens. So when that situation, it's not. It's not like we know this very clearly that sometimes people think that we can make the emum when we think there is no water. For example, it happened in this masjid once that on the lady side the bathroom door was locked. So they said we should make the emum. That's not, that's not the way it should be done. Water is not found within a mile and there's no chances of water. There's no hope of finding water. Then it becomes permissible to perform tayammu when you need to make wuzu. Instead of wuzu, you make a tayammu. And there's details to it that we could inshallah discuss with the ulama. But this, this ayah, this verse signifies tayammu, that it can be made uh, when water is not available. And it can become tayammu, this ayah also supports that tayammum or dry wuzu or making it on a dust not wuzu technically can suffice for can be used in place of major and minor seeking purification from major and minor impurities so from janabat which is the major impurity and the minor impurity as well both of these it can be it can suffice if the conditions are fulfilled اللهم اجعلنا من أهل القرآن الذي أهلك وخاصة ربنا تقبل منا أنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا أنك أنت التواب الرحيم صلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا ونانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين آمين رحمة الله الرحمن الرحيم